Okay, good morning, Dr. Ban Shah from Thailand. So my talk is about managing fail loaded calf repair. So the incidence of the calf repair is vary from 13% to about 80%. So it's depending on the initial tear size, tendon involvement, and the degree of muscle atrophy. So the retaliate retail is always happen between three to six months yeah, after the surgery. So this is the incidence of retail. If you have small size tear, it's about 10%. If you have big size tear, like more than six centimeters, the tear rate up to 50%. So what is repair failure? Uh, this is definition for, by Dr. Colin. So if you need to do reoperation in short term or medium term, or the patient have the ES score less than 70 or the patient have pseudo paralysis after the surgery. This is meaning of the repair failure. The sense of failure for the patients means the patients have persistent pain, post op stiffness, loss of strength, pseudo paralysis. That's the sense from the patient. For out of the doctor, the sense of failure means it failed to heal or the patient has worse symptoms after the surgery. So these are the list factors of the fail loaded the cuff. So the loaded the cuff factors is most important, the tear size. The patient have low BMD or biologic failure, like patient have uh, diabetes or smoking. So that's the uh, loaded the cuff factors. For the surgeon factor, this is very important. The surgical techniques, initial repair construct, or inadequate decompression or unrecognized acromion spur. That is the surgeon factors. The last factor is the patient's factors. The patient that is very stubborn and non-compliant patients, uh, inappropriate post-op rehab. Yeah, this 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 uh, uh, patient factors. So these all factors need to be considered for the fair load of the cuff. So this is a nice study from Dr. Yonggi Lee from Korea. Uh, many times it happened at the muscular tendinous junction. If you do too much strangulation by the repair or repair the medial row too much. So you cut the blood supply and they can strangulate and have the failed cuff. So I did the study um, about the construct of the cuff okay, using the suture bridge technique. This is our current technique. We use the 12 sutures without not tying. So we call this a dozen knotless suture bridge technique. So this is eight strand and this is a knot tying, conventional knot tying. We found that uh, the knot tying group they have the strangulation at the middle row. And our not less suture bridge, we have better pressure distribution and better contact area okay, using the 12 sutures. And also there's less strangulation at the middle row. So this is better for the healing. And then another thing is the inadequate decompression, uh, unrecognized acromion. Okay? If you see this kind of acromion, hook acromion, irregular spur, like this, you should decompress because this will cut your rotator cuff after the repair. So my personal experience, I prefer to uh, prepare my footprint as best as I can. I make a good breathing. I use microfracture to promote the healing for the medial side. The PRP did not have sub, uh, enough data to support the PRP injection for the healing. Okay, in the patient have poor BMD. So you need to know how to put the anchor. I, put to, I prefer to put the anchor at the bicipital groove in the front, okay? So this is our, our construct. Even this patient have severe osteoporosis, we still have good results. And another anchor is close to the infraspinatus. So very front, very back. So these two areas have the best bone qualities from our study. And this is another study. You should put the second row lower not put it too high because lower you have better bone quality. So in the osteoporotic, my recommendation is put it lower and in the bicipital groove and another one put cross to the infraspinatus insertion. Post op rehab rehabilitation, you should not send the patient to the PT, to the physiotherapist who did not know your protocol. Very risky. So they will torn your cuff. This is very common and really delay rehabilitation after the surgery, okay? Because yeah, if you go too fast, the cup will be failed, okay? So for me, I do very delay post-op rehabilitation, okay? 
So uh, post op failure, you can see that very simple. You have proximal migration, you have uh, narrow, a HI, or lost gothic arc. So this you can tell from X-ray that this is a failure. So you can use ultrasound to detect the failure or MRI also. This is another study for that if you have high critical or greater critical shoulder angle, you have had higher chance of calf tear or calf lead tear. Okay, ultrasound is a good option. This is a classification of the calf failure from Sugaya or from Dr. Colin. Okay, you can read in the articles. How many options for the fail? So you can do again, okay, calf repair, you can do minimal bicep surgery or do, uh, this is palliative, like you get in for decompression, uh, release, okay. And the curative option is like you going in and repair the calf again, you have enough tissues, tendon transfer, you put the patch on or yeah, can do the superior capsular reconstruction. And the last option is the reverse, because this is an option for the uh, failed loaded the calf repair. First patient, 57 years old, traumatic calf tear. So it has a weakness supraspinatus and subscapularis. HI is good. So the calf tear is not so big, it's small, subscap and supraspinatus. So I did the repair for him, okay, not so difficult. But this patient lost follow-up for eight months. After the surgery, the patient go back to work right away on the next week, and he didn't come back to follow up. So this come back with this. So this is the factors of the patients. The patient is non-compliant. Okay, they work right away, have no immobilization. Even you did a good job, it's failed. So this patient, I need to revise him. So when I get in, we found that the patient have big size tear, or is torn, right, like that. So we revise him again. Subscapularis, supraspinatus, repair, okay, and then we, uh, this bad, supraspinatus and subscapularis repair, okay. He still have enough tissue for repair, okay, but if it heal at the beginning, it should be better. So this is uh, after surgery, yeah, it's healed. Second patient, 62 years old, after arthroscopic, loaded the calf repair. The first doctor did not decompress. This last pearl, you see, it's too big. If you don't cut it, you have problem. So we get in, we remove the occlumen spur, we repair the rotator cuff back again. So you see that this is acromion, this is the rotator cuff. It's very really close. If you have irregular acromion, from this video, you can, you can tell that. It can retire again, you see, very really close together. So you need to smooth the acromion. So that's my idea. So when you decompress the acromion, this is my study. We call this the morphology classification of spur comparing to the intra -op. We found that this is acromion at least. If that a heel spur, if that Q spur, irregular spur. This tree spur is a scoment acromion at least. You should decompress, okay? Another one is a fracture of the spur. This patient, after the rotator the calf repair, okay, one year she used to have pain, okay? So this patient also, she's very really active. You see it's failed. And finally, you, we revise her again, okay? Using the suture bridge, okay? So the first time she did the knot tying, so it's torn at the musculotendinous junction. So this is my revision, and she's quite happy and calf heal nicely after the repair. So this is the because they tie the middle row too tight, okay? And this is another patient referred from one hospital. They also do the calf repair with the, uh, you see, this is a tear proximal. The footprint is still there. This is the muscle tendinous tear again. So, and the first doctor also missed this large acromion spur, right? So, I decompress the spur again and revise the calf, okay? Again, using the suture bridge technique. Okay, so luckily we have enough tissues to repair. Okay, this is a type two tear. I didn't remove the the stump. I keep this on and I reduce this back and made more medialized and it's healed nicely and the patient happy. So the complication of the revision, loaded the calf repair. You may have the most of the failure. Most of the complication is the failure. This is up to eighty eight percent. It's very high. 
the revision calf repair again very high okay and pers another complication is persistent stiffness after the surgery and infection so how about graft augmentations i did graft augmentation also if the patient had very really tight and had not enough tissue to heal on the footprint so these are study found that it's better okay than you do partial repair so this is one of my patients she has a very big size tear and I found that I have no, not enough tissue to cover. So first we make a good raw surface on the footprint. Then she has a very big bicep, you see? Big bicep. What you have to do is to release the bicep from the groove, okay? To the peg, uh, at the peg major insertion and then move the bicep to the middle, okay? This act like soft tissue augmentations. And then I release my loaded calf from the coracoid process. I didn't release my comma tissues. And then you make a biceps repair to the tuberosity. And after that, you repair the calf over the biceps again. Okay? So this is like soft tissue augmentations. So instead of cutting it, I put the bicep. You see that bicep in the middle here? And this is a vascularized bicep. I think that that may promote the vascularity to the calf also. See? So this is the result. Okay? You can see the bicep heal on the tuberosity like that. Yeah. And the patient happy. Yeah, this is about three months after surgery. So the augmented repair, uh, the result is, is not too bad. Okay? But also they're very high late if the gap is too much. Okay, it's good for the patient that have not enough tissue to heal on the footprint. You can augment. I prefer to use bicep to augment. Okay, the result is better than partial repair. Another option is a supracapsular reconstruction proposed by Teru Mihata. Yeah, he's my good friend. And his concept is to make a static stabilizer preventing a supramigration. It just act like the soft tissue buffer on the footprint. Okay? And the result is pretty good. So Teru Miyata, he changed the world. He changed the concept of cup repair. Okay, and his result is pretty good. Increased AHI and also the patient 90% satisfied with that. And the complication rate is only single digits. Okay, pain relief, function better, rate of motion better. So this is SCR. I, and very important, I discussed with him, you need to have thick graft more than eight millimeters. If you have thin graft, you didn't have the effect of soft tissue buffer. So important, thick graft, fascia lata. That's why the telumiata result is different from the European. They use the dermal patch. It's different. Dermal patch is very thin. It cannot compare to the supracapsular reconstruction. So this patient had the failed loaded calf repair. So it's failed and the cover is retracted so far. This patient is 60 years old, he's still young. So I use the tensor fascia ladder, okay? And then I flip my garf. The side is, dimension is about four by five, okay? So we make a good raw surface on the green oil, put the anchors like that, and then we pass the graph in. So the, this graph have to be thick enough, okay? And then I do side to side repair to the rest of the calf, and then repair it this way, okay? So this is the results after the surgery. The patient have pretty good results after that. Another option is tendon transfer. I have limited experience about that. So uh, the concept is to make a good force corpus. In the front, you prefer, uh, if you have anthrosuprior tear, okay? The very common procedures, they prefer peg major or peg minor transfer. For the posterior superior cuff, uh, they prefer LD and new concept is the trapezius, lower trapezius transfer proposed by El Hassan that will come to our meeting next year. The reverse is very good option. This is a, one indication for reverse. And the result of the reverse is pretty good, very reliable in the high volume surgeons. Okay? The patient can recover after surgery very fast and uh, the function is pretty good but it still have very high complication in the beginners or the low volume surgeons, okay? So this is an option of the reverse. Long-term long -term outcome of the reverse is now the up to 90% is quite good. So this is one of the patients have the 
massive rotator cuff tear, and she has all, also no uh, teres minor. We need to do reverse together with the uh, lapis cobo. Yeah, tendon transfer. Okay, and the result is good. Yeah, this is another patient that have the failed calf tear. But in the failed calf tear, especially the patient that have have uh, very thin acromion, they tend to have fracture of the acromion. Careful, they have stress fracture after surgery. Post op care very slow. Okay, very slow. Do not aggressive rehabilitation after the revision calf repair. And also after reverse, I prefer to put the abduction pillows to reduce the deltoid tensions, to reduce the risk of the acromion uh, stress fracture. Okay, at six weeks, and this is after three months. Okay, the patient getting much better. Okay, so this is algorithm. If you have retired rotator cuff, first you see the remnant is enough or not. You have fatty degeneration less than three or not, or forward elevation. If you have enough tissues, you can do revision, calf repair. If not enough tissues, you can do supracapsular reconstruction. If the patient has pseudopolylysis, if there's no arthritic change, you can do tendon transfer, right, or SCR. If the patient has arthritic change already, we need to change to use a reverse. If the patient low demand, high morbidities, we do conservative treatment, okay? Thank you. And next year, we have the massive loaded the cuff course in our app class meeting the first day on the 8th of July. Please save the date. Okay, you, everything we talk today will be discussed in this pre conquest course, massive loaded the cuff course. Next year meeting. Welcome, everyone, to Thailand. Thank you. Oh, no, next. Oh, sorry. This year, not next year. <laughs> sorry. This year, 2020. Thank you to remind me.